talk about your reaction to gas can uh, claims and theories. What's your what's your take on that as a, as a defendant, and more importantly, what do you think if you were a juror in that room and you're hearing things like that on top of the claims of the gun? Well, I I definitely have things to say about that, but I've been advised not to talk about it because of possible appeals and things. What about the the idea that you know you're you're avid active cell phone user and always use your cell phone very active, and suddenly it goes off? What are your, what's your thought on that? What's your reaction? Same, same answer. I'm sorry. I'd like to answer that because I, I do have things to say about that, but they told me don't relitigate the case. So, will there be a time you feel comfortable doing that, or sure. if they come back with a with a with a death sentence, um, do you plan to appeal until you run out of all of your appeals? For the sake of my family, I do. Yes. You talked about being wanting to try to affect positive change in prison. We've talked about many other examples. Have you had success with that as an inmate so far? I You're, believe I have. Like, what's an example of that? Where you probably um, could change yeah. somebody or affect somebody? Well, there's a certain like mood or atmosphere because in this jail we have different housing units and there are different inmates in each housing unit, and it creates a certain the makeup of people in there create a certain chemistry, a certain environment, a certain mood, and that can be affected in a way. Um, I'm, I think I do it without knowing it because people come up to me and tell me, you know, they tell me about the positive influence I've had on them or on the people around me and that sort of thing and how much, and they thank me for it. And it's, that was never my intention. I think, I think they've looked at my attitude throughout the years here as something, I feel like I'm tooting my own horn. <laughs> they think, like, specifically, they were inspired why exactly they thank you for what? Just because of my, I tend to keep a positive attitude about things. Um, you were suicidal at various points. Well, I was, but that's not something that you tell people because then they haul you off to suicide watch and it sucks. So, um, like if somebody comes back from court and they said, I got released, I'm genuinely happy for that person. I'm not like bitter because I'm still in here and they're getting out. So, usually it's, um, it's just being able to appreciate other people and what they're going through and their experiences. A few last questions here, Jerry. You've said a, a number of times now that it, it, your family is the reason that, that you want to sort of fight for your life and, and file these appeals. Let's take your family out of it. Do you still feel that death is the ultimate freedom? If you didn't have your family in the picture, would you rather die than, than be in prison for the rest of your life? Um, I do believe that death is the ultimate freedom. If I didn't have my family here, it would be difficult to say. Um, I still feel like there are ways that I can contribute and almost that I owe it uh, to others to do what I can to contribute to them. So it's difficult to say. So you still have a chance, right, uh, your lawyers probably advise this. The judge can get life and say you're eligible for release after 25 years, right? Right. How optimistic are you that scenario happening? Not optimistic. Not um, optimistic at all? One, what percentage optimistic do you think you are? Uh, well, I think that I deserve, um, if I get life, I deserve to have a second shot at freedom someday because I know I'd be very responsible with it. However, um, and I can't predict the future, but based on some of the rulings that have made previously, I can see the judge leaning toward natural life as opposed to giving me any shot of a chance later. How do you feel the judge handled this case fair? Um, well, I'm biased, so it's difficult to answer that question. I yeah, think. I'm asking your opinion. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't feel that it's fair, but maybe it's fair, and I'm just biased. Did you get a fair trial? I don't think I did. Why didn't you get a fair trial? Um, I believe the jury should have been sequestered, and whether or not they heard anything. I know they've seen a lot of things and that they have been harassed by the media because we've made several records of it and they've made record of it in closed hearings. Jerry, this will be my last question. I think Josh will probably have another one, but I guess going back to the attack, I mean, I guess, you know, we, we talk about that Travis attacked you and then you were defending yourself, but I know, I know there's this fog that you're in, but how, how can you explain the, uh, um, 
sheer brutality of the attack, the amount of stab wounds, the slit throat, the shot to the forehead. Um, how do you explain that, even if you can't remember, looking back, thinking that, that you did this? I remember feelings, and one of my feelings that I remember that was most prominent was severe mortal terror. And I don't know if that explains why things happened the way they did. But um, it was definitely fight or flight. Can you talk just a little more about your mother throughout this ordeal? How often do you talk to her? What's her moods been like? How did, what's financially, how's she doing? How she's doing horribly she financially. She lost her job of 17 years to be at my trial along with that all was, of her benefits. Was a dental hygienist job? Uh, she was not a hygienist, she was a receptionist. Oh, receptionist. Yes. Um, she, she was she a, a dental she assistant. She here so she couldn't keep her job, you're saying? Yeah, they, she had been telling them for four years, you know, um, I'm going to my daughter's trial, I'm going to my daughter's trial, will you be able to hold my position? They said, we don't know, we don't know. And then um, I think about a few weeks or a month into her being here, they fired her. And how does she, how does she pay for hotels? Or how did, where does she stay? How does she, I mean, how does she, not without giving locations, how does she do it? We have family here. She's she, staying with she's them. She's staying with family members? Yes. And what, how often do you talk to her? Um, like every month, day. For example. Every day. I call her every day. You call her, you like, collect calls? And yes. You see her in person how often? Um, we're, I'm, I'm, only, I'm limited on the type of the number of visits I can receive here, so we use them all. We max out the visits every week. So has it actually made you and your mother closer throughout this whole process? I would say yes. Um, it's kind of forced us to be closer, and that's caused some growing pains. Um, but ultimately, I think it has. How does it feel knowing that, I mean, one of the things you talked about is crisp is the Christmas picture, and one of the things they showed at the end was the Christmas picture and with you in it. How do you feel knowing that you most likely won't be able to spend a Christmas again with your family? It's heartbreaking, but I have to consider the fact that Travis isn't either, and it's hard. It, I don't like to focus so much on me. I put all of that stuff about me in my allocution because that's my attorneys recommended that I do that. And they said allocution is about you and your life, and we'd like you to focus on that, your life before Travis. And so I led up to that, and we thought it would be good to put that picture in. And I thought it was, um, I thought it was a powerful picture. And so we included it. And I really hope that it wasn't, that was one segment of my allocution, so I really hope that I didn't come across as it's all about me, because it really isn't. Um, as I did state in allocution, theirs is the greater loss. When you were being interrogated by Rachel Blaney, remember her, Siskiyou County deputy? She went through a lot of the scenarios for you, and I didn't even explain this before, but I just want to hear it um, in person, where she said, and she was being very nice, I thought in the interview it seemed like, and she was saying, if things got a little violent or out of control, these things happen, it's okay, Jody. Just tell us what happened, and we can move on and, and tell it, do it for the family and things like that. Why not? Why, why were you so adamantly denying it when she was giving you opportunity after opportunity to say, "It's okay, Jody. It's okay. I things happen. The relationships can become tumultuous. Why? Why not? Why, why, that was your opportunity. Why not? Why not say something then?" I wasn't anywhere near ready to admit that I could have been capable of that. So even though every time she said that, it just hit home, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she, she's reading my mind, oh my gosh. You know, but I couldn't bring myself to say, okay, fine, this is what happened. I just was not mentally ready to even go there or even admit to myself that I lost control like that. You're welcome. Is it? Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's all. You done for the marriage? Um, yeah. You guys are the last. <laughs>